afternoon, uh, everyone. Thanks uh, uh, for your time today. Uh, I've got Dr. Mendoza here as well. I know a number of uh, you in the media have reached out looking for comment uh, and our reaction this week to the news from the state. So we're available here to take some questions. Uh, before we take uh, the questions that you might have, I, I guess I'll just start um, by reiterating um, our full support uh, for the governor's decision yesterday uh, to lift the statewide school mask requirement. Um, uh, we think it's the right thing to do here. It's a welcome decision by the governor. We want, want to thank the governor uh, for making that decision this week uh, uh, for our schools. Um, we also understand that there's some flexibility uh, built in uh, uh, for counties to make decisions based on county uh, uh, health metrics and data about whether or not to implement a county wide uh, a mask requirement uh, for schools. And I uh, would like the community to know that Monroe County will not be implementing uh, a mask requirement for schools uh, this week. Um, uh, we support the governor's decision to lift uh, the mask requirement um, and, and believe that this would be a choice uh, that families will be making uh, in the coming days and weeks for their children, what's right for themselves and their children. Uh, but the one message that I do want uh, to get out there uh, to our families though is, is to recognize and understand um, a lot of people even though it's not a requirement uh, later this week a lot of families are still going to choose to wear a mask uh, a lot of students are still going to choose to wear a mask based on their own personal situation and their situation at home and the loved ones that they live with um, we need to be respectful of everyone's choice whether a student chooses to wear a mask or just chooses not to wear a mask or a teacher a faculty member or an administrator we need to be respectful of everyone's personal uh, individual choices that they make um, and work together here just like we have through the whole pandemic uh, so we till we get through this uh, uh, healthy and safe so with that um, I don't know, Dr. Mendoza if you had anything you wanted to add here at the beginning uh, if not we could take some questions well, happy to take your questions Great. I will do this like our previous COVID briefings. Reporters will get one question and then one follow-up question after that. And first, we will start with WXXI. I believe we have Raquel on the line. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. How are you guys? Raquel. Good. How are you? Um, great. My, my only concern is that we only have one um, testing site um, still open from the county, which is the 804 North Goodman Street, right? Um, and I know people are still rapid home tests, tests are not always correct, right? And people are going to rush to probably urgent cares or hospitals to get PCR testing. Um, is there a concern that this will cause like an influx of people rushing to urgent cares to, to make sure that this testing is correct? So the first thing I'd like to point out is the, the correctness of these tests um, in large majority, you know, refers to how useful they are in, the, in a certain situation clinically. Given that uh, COVID is much less prevalent now, uh, I don't believe it's uh, as important to do routine uh, surveillance testing of the broad community. Um, and in this way, what I'm advising is that uh, if people have symptoms, then we want them to get a test. And uh, as usual, if people have symptoms, we want them to contact their healthcare provider. So there is somewhat of a shift that's happening. We're not doing as much community-based testing, but what we're asking people to do is what we've done before uh, the pandemic, which is that if you're feeling sick, you know, and you feel you need to get tested, we want you to reach out to your healthcare provider. Uh, and the decision on where the, uh, the county-run testing sites are located and the hours and availability is actually driven by demand. Uh, so by definition, I think we're filling the demand that's out there with that, but we're also supplementing that demand with the rapid test kits uh, that have been made available. Uh, we have uh, worked with a, a public library system uh, to make rapid test kits available starting tomorrow at uh, most libraries throughout Monroe County. Uh, and so we want to thank the library uh, for working with us on that and all the librarians who are adding you know, just another thing to the list of, of all the various services uh, that they uh, that they provide for our community and being able to help distribute these rapid test kits. So in addition to still continuing to do the county run sites, scale to the demand that we've been meeting, we're also gonna be able to, to, to put out uh, a lot more rapid test sites uh, more conveniently located throughout the community or rapid test distributions. I'm, I'm I'm not sure if I get a follow up or not. I don't know if there's a right question. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> these uh, some libraries are not participating in the distribution right now. Is there a reason why um, that Greece or Parma, Chile are not participating? 
Mm-hmm. And we just want to thank the ones that, that have agreed to do that. Um, you know, each library is going to have a different situation, right? Um, and what they're able to accommodate uh, at their libraries and in their buildings. But um, like I said, most libraries, and they're pretty spread out throughout the county, uh, have agreed to help with this and, and add this to their uh, portfolio there. And I want to thank them for doing that. It's a great service to the community to be able to offer them uh, really where these, where these libraries are located. Most libraries, I mean, they're, they're neighborhood-based uh, buildings uh, and they're very accessible to residents and they know where they are and, and have a relationship with their community. All right, next up we have Jennifer Lutke from Channel 10. Hey, good afternoon. Um, Dr. Mendoza, can you kind of walk us through what your discussions have been with the schools? How will positive cases be handled in school now if some of the kids are masked, some are not. What are your expectations when it comes to sort of contact tracing through schools again? Well, Jennifer, to some degree, we're back to the beginning with regard to how we're going to be approaching these uh, cases in, in the classrooms. Uh, you'll recall now almost two years ago, not just short of two years ago, uh, if there was a case in a, a, a classroom, we would have a conversation with that individual. Uh, we would rely on the school for notifying us uh, if, if there are any other concerns, but we'll hear about the positives. Um, and uh, if if there is a concern in the school, we'll take it on a case by case basis. But we're not going to be doing any, you know, automatic uh, classroom closures based on this or that. Um, you know, Omicron, uh, which we still believe is the dominant variant here in the community, is much milder. Uh, that does not mean it's not concerning to some, uh, particularly those who are medically vulnerable. But um, we're going to uh, treat each case on a case by case basis. And uh, if we need to make recommendations for the school to close a classroom, I think that would be a, a conversation that we have with the school. So just to clarify, then a positive case in a classroom doesn't necessarily mean that unvaccinated students will have to quarantine themselves or even mm-hmm. mask because so because we have that isolation and quarantine guidance for the public in Monroe County that mm-hmm. is not translated over to the schools. Well, that is something that I'm going to address with the schools tomorrow. In general, it will not translate over to the school setting. But, you know, I think um, in all fairness, I haven't had a chance to meet with the school superintendent since it was break last week. So I want to hear what they have to say. Um, But uh, from my standpoint, I don't see us doing any kind of automatic quarantining uh, or any automatic anything at this point. And then just lastly, I will um, ask, you know, I mean, do you anticipate students sort of going back to some sort of a normalcy or in those conversations with schools, will you still say, hey, if you can keep them a little apart at lunch, please do so. Are cohorts still a thing? Are social distance still a thing? Or for the most part, will students on Wednesday in Monroe County have a sense of, oh, this feels like a few years ago? I think many students will feel like it's uh, similar to a few years ago, but by every measure, it won't be exactly like a few years ago. Um, You know, many parents still have questions. Uh, We still know that there are many parents on all angles of the spectrum with regard to the uh, amount of risks they're comfortable to take. Um, But I think we'll be, you know, as before, kind of walking through this feeling our way together. Uh, But I think, uh, you know, the announcement for the governor uh, will mean that Wednesday is a a welcome change. And I'm hopeful that many people will find that it's, uh, you know, what we've been looking for, the ability to uh, start to ascertain our risk on an individual and a family basis, and then we'll continue, continue the conversation with our schools. Next up, we have Dalton with Channel 13. Hi, can y'all hear me? Yep. Hi, Dalton. Hi. Uh, so my question is, we just had break last week. Are there any concerns that now that we're going maskless that they, that we could see any potential spikes in the coming weeks? Well, you know, we've been tracking the numbers every day uh, during break week uh, uh, with, that are reported from the at-home testing kits and then also obviously the lab confirmed cases and we have not seen any spikes so far uh, from the break week. Um, obviously, we'll see what happens now when kids are back in school uh, uh, this week, um, but we haven't seen any spikes. I mean, honestly, we have just been over the last several weeks um, on a very very good trajectory with our numbers. All the key indicators are going down. The number of cases are going down. New hospital admissions day to day are going down. Uh, The average number of patients in the hospital is going down and it's consistent. Um, And so I I think we're still going to be in that direction. You know, obviously, if things change, um, there's flexibility uh, uh, to make changes in the mitigation strategies. 
Um, but I also think that we've gone through so much in the last year and a half, people know at this point what they need to do to protect themselves, right? Um, a lot of in individuals though are still gonna wanna wear a mask and feel that's the right thing to do for themselves. And if they feel that way, to, if they feel that that's the right thing to do for themselves, then they should, they should wear a mask. Um, and uh, I mean, and we also put out guidance here at the county, uh, I think several weeks ago, on different situations that you would want to consider still uh, whether or not masking is right for you. Things like your vaccination uh, status, um, you know, uh, the vaccine, you know, the, um, uh, you know, if you've come into contact with somebody who has, uh, who has tested positive, things like that. Um, so we want to make sure people are still using common sense, uh, you know, using the information that they know that works. Um, the other strategies too, uh, remember masking isn't the only strategy here. The vaccination is still the number one tool in the toolbox here to keep the community healthy at large. Also, if you're not feeling well, we're still asking people, please stay home. Um, I think we've learned a lot too in the last couple of years. We're a lot more flexible uh, with uh, our coworkers, our classmates, if they need to call in sick. Uh, we're a lot more flexible than I think we used to be and a lot more accepting of people staying home if they're not feeling well. So we still wanna encourage folks to do that and please take advantage of the free rapid test kits uh, that are being distributed across the community. So I think vaccination, testing, stay home if you're not feeling well, and mask if it's the appropriate thing for you to do and be respectful of everyone's choices. Okay, uh, I don't have any further questions, thank you. Hey, uh, Isabel Garcia with Channel 8. Isabel, are you on? My understanding is that they will not be required to mask on school buses Wednesday. Right, uh, for the that duration right, of the pandemic, we've, we've yeah. viewed the school buses really as an extension of the school and not an extension of public transportation. So uh, whatever the district policy uh, is, will apply to the, the, the right. school buses serving that district. Okay, and that actually raises an interesting point too. Um, families, if they have questions about their individual school district um, and policies such as that, should make sure they're contacting their individual school district as well if they have additional questions because the state uh, requirements been lifted. Uh, as, we, as we indicated, Monroe County will not be implementing a countywide requirement here, uh, but that might not be the same for schools. So make sure you're reading all the communication that's coming back from your schools uh, as well. All right, do we have a reporter from Spectrum News on the line? Anyone with Spectrum on the line? All right, I think that's it. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Have a great Thank rest of your day. Have a good week.